thermal expansion. Thermal expansion, linear expansion. If the temperature of a metal rod of length L is raised by an amount delta T, its length is found to increase by an amount delta L equal to L alpha delta T. It's proportional to its length and proportional to the temperature difference at a constant, where alpha equal to delta L over L over delta T. This alpha we call the constant called coefficient of linear expansion. The coefficient alpha has the unit, the okay, this unit, this don't have a unit. Delta L over L is percentage. So this is a degree. So alpha called per degree or per Kelvin. Different material has different alpha. We can check from the book. We'll use this long iron wire to show how materials expand when they're heated. A weight is hung on the wire and an electrical current is run through the wire to heat it. As the wire heats up, it expands and begins to sag. Increasing the temperature increases the amount of expansion. When the current is turned off and the wire cools, it contracts to its original length. Delta L equals L alpha delta T. A valve equation applies to every linear dimension of the rule, including this H the thickness and diagonals and the diameter of the circle etched on it and the circular hole cut in it. By metal strips, this strip is composed of two different metal. Above it, the brass lower layer is steel. When the temperature increases, the brass has a large alpha, so it extends more. A band, okay, we can use to control the temperature. Brass expands when heated. This thin brass plate has a circular hole in its center. When the plate is heated, will the brass expand inward? Will the hole become bigger, become smaller, or remain the same size? To verify our result, we compare the size of the hole with the size of this ball, which will not quite fit through the hole. We now heat the plate. After the plate is heated, the ball fits through the hole, indicating that the hole expands when the plate is heated. This strip is made of two different metals with different coefficients of thermal expansion. If we put it in a flame, the strip bends. What will happen when we put the strip in liquid nitrogen? The strip bends the other way. This animation shows an exaggerated view of the different expansion of the separate metals as they are heated. When they are bonded together, the difference in expansions makes the strip curve. If this material is bent into a helix, heating the strip makes the helix twist further. 
turning a pointer, which can be used to indicate temperature. This is a linear expansion coefficient. Uh, look at this different. This is metal. Uh, this is metal. Okay. This is the smallest the diffused quartz. Okay. This is alpha. Volume expansion. If all dimensions of a solid expand with temperature, the volume of that solid must also expand. Delta V is proportional to V delta T and the constant beta. The beta equal to delta V over V, the relative change in volume, divided by delta T. We call it coefficient of volume expansion of the solid or liquid. And this coefficient of volume expansion and the coefficient of linear expansion alpha for solid are related by beta equal to 3 alpha. Now we can prove it later. This is a model of the first crude thermometer designed by Galileo. A glass bulb at the top contains air at about atmospheric pressure. A tube runs down from the air flask into another flask filled with water, which has risen partly up the tube. If a person places their hands on the air flask, the air expands and forces the water level in the tube down. The water level thus gives a rough indication of the temperature of the air in the bulb. We'll use this flask filled with colored water and fit it with a glass tube to demonstrate how a thermometer works. When we heat the water in the flask, it expands and rises up the glass tube. The position of the water level can thus be used as an indication of the temperature of the water. Most liquids expand as their temperature increases, but there is one notable exception to the rule, water at low temperature. We'll use this flask filled with colored water and an ice bath to demonstrate how water can actually contract as it warms. After about an hour in the ice bath, the water inside the flask is nearly at zero degrees Celsius. The flask is now removed from the ice. We'll follow the water level in this capillary tube using time-lapse photography as the water temperature increases. The water level drops at first. The water is contracting as the temperature increases. When the temperature of the water reaches four degrees, normal expansion begins. We'll use the pressure generated by water as it freezes to crack this strong iron vessel. The vessel is first filled with water. A plug is then tightly sealed into the top
and the vessel is placed in a bath of liquid nitrogen. A few minutes later, the vessel explodes. The thick iron walls were no match for the tremendous pressure generated by the water as it froze. This animation shows the pressure on the inner surface of the vessel generated by the freezing water. Almost all metals expand when they are heated. We'll demonstrate the immense force of that expansion using this iron rod and a steel pin. The rod is placed in a strong frame and the pin is put in a hole near the end of the rod. The pin is tightened against the frame by turning this large nut. The steel pin is now pressed tight against the frame. A series of gas jets under the iron rod are lighted and begin heating the rod. After a few minutes of heating, the expansion of the rod breaks the steel pin. This type of expansion would destroy bridges and other large metal structures, so they are designed with expansion joints that allow the metal to expand and contract without stress.